Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Well, it is the 17th of June 2024. So, um, happy Salah to all of our Muslim faithfuls, all of our Muslim brothers and sisters. Happy Salah. It's a public holiday here in Nigeria and we're celebrating um, Salah today. Also, happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers in the world. The celebration was yesterday, but it's not too late to still say happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are stepping up to the plate, who are being nurturing, loving to their children, showing up every single day, training them, leading them. Well, thank you for all that you do. Happy Father's Day to you. We, we love you so much and we cannot quantify how much you mean to the world and you make the world a better place. All right, um, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which lawmakers propose ending second term for president and governors. Another is Fini the judge quits on Nigeria's 2026 World Cup in jeopardy. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. And our quote of the day is, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. And that is by Winston Churchill, he was a former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and he says this morning, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts, yes. And I think that is quite, um, you know, self-explanatory. When you succeed, it's not because you cannot give up, but you try to continue. And it is that courage to continue every day working um, on that task ahead of you that, you know, brings the success. And when you fail, uh, even if you fail right now, it's not fatal. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of your big, beautiful idea. It is just that courage to pick yourself up and say, you know what, I'm going to try at this thing again. But when you're trying again, you're trying in different ways. If you do not have a different approach, then it's going to be the same thing and it might still end in failure. But then if you decide that I want to have a different approach to this, maybe I did X, Y, Z, and now I want to do A, B, C to have that different outcome, that different result, then that is success. Um, you might just find your success there. So success is not final. You have to continue. You know, I was speaking to someone and I was telling the person that success can be quite addi addictive. You know, when you're succeeding, you, you want more because human wants are insatiable. So success is a little bit addictive and you want more. And so it's not your final destination. If you feel like you've succeeded today, don't say, you know what, I'm going to relax and not do anything anymore. No, you have to continue because you want more success um, as humans. And then even if you fail understand that it is not fatal it is not the end you can still pick yourself back up and try again and that is what our quote of the day is this morning it's mindset monday and we're trying to champion you know a cause for you to change your mindset to to just have that paradigm shift and let you know that you can be successful you can have all that you want as long as you have the courage to keep trying all right, enough of you know the code. Let's move over to some top trending stories this morning. This one says cholera kills 15 in Lagos, 350 suspected cases recorded. The Lagos Ministry of Health said there are 17 confirmed cases of cholera in the state. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, disclosed this while speaking on steps to taken to control the outbreak in Lagos State. It revealed that 350 suspected cases of cholera were reported in 29 wards across multiple local government areas in Lagos State with 17 confirmed cases and 15 fatalities so far. The, labo the, the laboratory investigation and test results have so far confirmed cholera subtype 01. This subtype is associated with well, severe diseases, the pattern of the new cases per day varies across local government areas according to our ongoing surveillance and monitoring updates, the Health Commissioner said in a statement signed by the Ministry's Director of Public Affairs, Subosu Ogumbawa. The in inspections of facilities are ongoing. We're proposing um, cholera kits in health facilities across the state. Our efforts to control the outbreak also include the distribution of oral rehydration solutions, ORLs, and public health education campaigns. 
the commissioner called on residents of Lagos State to adhere strictly to precautionary measures, cooperate with health authorities, and participate in community-wide sanitation activities to mitigate the spread of cholera. Now, cholera is one of the um, deadliest diseases everywhere in the world. In fact, cholera with smallpox, with influenza, um, you know, those are really deadliest, what, those are really one of the deadliest diseases that you can find. And according to WHO, it says that cholera can kill you within minutes or hours, um, you know, after getting it, if not treated. So it is important that, you know, with the fact that cholera is out there, we have to be careful. And the same way we're careful when, you know, COVID-19 was on a rampage, you also have to be careful. And what are ways to ensure that you prevent cholera? Well, you have to wash your hands regularly, ensure that all your surfaces are clean. You have to ensure that you're drinking distilled and um, bottled water, you know, clean water. You have to ensure that, you know, even your toilets, all the surfaces are clean. Um, you, if, if you have to eat, ensure that your food is being cooked properly. And then if you have to use fresh fruits, make sure that you're, you know, washing them. And, you know, my own personal way of ensuring that there is no bacteria in my fruits is using a vinegar, a white vinegar. So ensure that you're washing it. Even if you do not have vinegar, it's okay. Ensure that you're washing your fruits or your raw foods um, with clean distilled water. Um, and I know that is the salad break. Everybody is out there enjoying eating, but please, you have to be careful with what you're eating, where you're eating it, because personal hygiene is imperative at this point to be able to save yourself. Because we're looking at the numbers, although um, you know the the um, health ministry has said that the numbers seem to have a decline, which is great, but then um, you just do not want that for yourself and for your family. So ensure that you're keeping safe at this time. All right, moving over to another top trending story. This is a sad one coming from Sokoto. It says, gunmen kill, abduct many in Sokoto village on Saladay. Suspected gunmen have attacked Sokoto village, killed and abducted many in the early hours of Sunday. The attackers stormed Dudun, the key village of Guadabawa, local government area of Sokoto, killing over 10 people and abducted many at about 1.30 a.m. on Sunday. The public relations officer of the police command in Sokoto, Hamed Rufai, confirmed the attack. He said six bodies have been retrieved so far, but the police have yet to ascertain the number of ab abducted persons. Sokoto is one of the several states in the northwestern and central regions terrorized by heavily armed gangs who carry out mass abductions for ransom, as well as burning and looting homes. This is quite sad because almost um, this is almost the same thing we saw on um, New Year Day. In fact, during the festivities from Christmas to New Year, to the New Year, you kept hearing of people being attacked in their villages and um, people being abducted. And it's quite unfortunate that people are ready to celebrate, you know, Salah, such a good time, um, you know, for the Muslim faithfuls. And then you hear of stories like this, whereby they're being killed, they're being maimed, they're being abducted. Um, it's quite unfortunate that we're still having this kind of conversation in 2024, especially when security takes a huge chunk of our budget. And that, you know, bits the question, what is the government doing about this? How are you ensuring that the lives and properties of Nigerians are safe? We cannot be in our homes, um, and then we, ju we just don't know what's going to happen next. These people were abducted and killed at 1.30 a.m. I'm sure they were ready um, to sleep. They were possibly deciding on what to eat the next day, how to celebrate Salah, not knowing that that would probably be their last day. And it's quite unfortunate that, you know, every day or every other week, you're hearing stories like this. And... You know, you, you get taken, you're being asked um, for ransom, a huge sum that they probably would never see in their lives or they've never seen in their lives because these are villagers. These are people just trying to make ends meet. And I think the government 
really needs to do something about this because it's becoming a maintenance. Um, some people feel like that is a way for them to make money, um, having to abduct people and ask for ransom. That is not a good way to make money. You can still earn an honest living in Nigeria and, you know, um, your life would be would still be great. Your life would still be better. You will still have all of the things that you want. Having to loot or having to steal, kill, um, abduct people is definitely not the way to go. I know some people might come out and say, you know what, it's because there's so much unemployment in the land, people just um, have to find a way for themselves, especially when their backs are up against the wall. But your back cannot be up against the wall. And the next thing you're thinking is how to kill and abduct people. It's quite unfortunate, and we're calling on all of our security forces. Please come together and ensure that we combat this. It is becoming a rampage that is just not good, even for our PR as Nigerians. How do you want the world to look at us? How do you want other people to look at us? If we cannot tackle something as, you know, important as security how do you want other people to come and invest in your country how do you want to boost tourism there is a lot at stake and so we hope that the federal government um you know and all of the security forces are doing their best to ensure that we combat this <laughs> all right our final top trending story this morning says ndlea bus drug warehouse in lagos seizes 4.7 billion anara cocaine meth Officers of the Special Operation Unit of the National Drug Law and Enforcement Agency, NDLE, a bus at a cartel controlled by a drug baron, 49-year-old Kelechi Monde Mwabasi, and his 50-year-old elder sister, Mrs. Chingwe Rose Mwabasi. Following the arrest of the siblings, the operative seized cocaine and meth consignments worth over 4.1 billion naira in street value from their hideout in Aba Abia State. Spokesman of the agency, Femi Baba Femi, said the special operation conducted followed months of intelligence gathering and leading to the arrest of the ringleaders and the combined seizure of 20.76 kilograms of cocaine and meth from them. Quite sad. <laughs> it's just the same thing I'm saying. Um, you know, we keep saying the government is not doing enough, there is unemployment, and so we have to find other means. But having to do... You know what? You can never make good, valuable wealth from criminality. It's not possible. All you can do is maybe have something to probably put food on your table as of this minute. But guess what? You would never feel safe because you would always be looking at your back. You will always feel like someone is coming for you. You would never be settled. You would never have rest of mind. Look at this. How can two siblings you know, have become ringleaders for something as such as this. And that is such a huge amount when, it come, when you think about, you know, how much the street value is. That's such a huge amount. Please, we cannot be doing this. We cannot. Nigerians are not known to be criminals. Instead, Nigerians are known to be hardworking, resilient, happy people. We are the best people in the world. And that is what we should be showcasing. That is what we should be showing the world. Not going into criminality, not going, you know, into things that are illegal. Um, and I call, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, the, the NDLE is doing this. Even in Ogun State, they've been able to um, crack down some um, criminals there as well who are into things like this. And I hope that they're just moving around and ensuring that we have some form of sanitation in our nation. Because I've always said this. We never really talk about the drug problem in Nigeria. We have a huge problem. You're seeing little kids going into things like this, like meth, like cocaine, like weed. And why is that? Because it's all over the streets. It's easily accessible. And so why not? They can obviously get that. But we need to combat this for the future of our kids. We really, really need to. And also, let's talk about you know, the health risk when you take hard drugs like this. You're you know, making yourself susceptible to schizophrenia. You're making your brain get damaged. Even cancer. There are so many hazards that this thing poses. And so it is important that you try to desist from it. If you're into it already, please make sure that you're trying your best. You're going into rehab, doing something that can take you out. And if you are in the business, please 
it is a criminal offense to sell, um, you know, to have a business that sells drugs, that sells things like methamphetamine, that sells things like cocaine, like weed, and whatever you can find in the streets. So please, I'm grateful that the NDLE is, you know, doing this crackdown on all the people that are, you know, selling this type of drugs, and I hope that it continues to do more. And I would say it is commendable. Thank you so much for your service, and we hope that, you know, you continue to do more and combat this. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break, we'll look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.